All right, good morning. Saturday morning coming to you. <laughs> Everybody's got your uh, cup of coffee and everything, hopefully. So we're going to go ahead and read through your comments uh, from the last week's show and everything. So we've got some really cool thing I'm going to run down real quick with you uh, that we brought out. So uh, off with uh, to your comments. Again, if your comment wasn't read uh, either too late uh, during production of the show, or uh, your comment just contains stuff that we do not um, yeah, read on our, our family-friendly show and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, here we go. Jeffrey Richardson, uh, great-looking range day loadout. Thank you. Yes, I love the 1911s, and uh, that's pretty much my thing. <laughs> uh, anything outside of that, it kind of gets a little spotty. I don't know. <laughs> all right, uh, Sean Lee, uh, morning all. Uh, you sure do always have a slick looking grips on your 1911s. They really make them look cool. I do appreciate that. Actually, we're going to talk a little bit about grips this uh, week, so uh, stay tuned for that. All right, Crazy Scotsman, uh, Tales from the Crypt, such a classic. Even back um, home, we had uh, that. I remember watching some of them. Snub Nose 44 is still on my list. Yes, <laughs> you got to go watch the episode Cutting Cards. Uh, that's a, that's a, that one is for you, Crazy Scotsman. Go watch that episode, Cutting Cards, uh, Tales from the Crypt. You'll see that. That's a really, uh, you'll, you'll want that snubby 44 even more once you see that. <laughs> okay. Um, and it says, always good to have a test firearm for hand loads. Yes, it is. Um, I actually mentioned that to um, a fellow YouTuber, TAB. Uh, videos. I told him uh, he had a, um, a some revolver. I think it was that he didn't know rather he should keep or not. And I mentioned, you know, it's always good to have a test one. That you just throw stuff in there. Um, I kind of still want, like, you know, for me to test 44. Um, I still kind of want a Ruger Redhawk, just because things a tank. Um, you know, can pretty much test loads in it, and you know, I don't think I would be able to wear it out um, by the time I. Uh, kick the bucket <laughs> so all right uh cap says uh would like to hear your gun trading stories uh what you traded how you decided on what to let go uh what you traded it for and if you got a good deal or not always good to see the guns on the table got good, good stuff on the table this time for you cap um you know what uh, one that comes to my mind was I traded a python, a Colt python, I had an old Colt python, original one. This was right before, right before the new ones hit the market. I had heard the rumor that the new 2020s were hitting the market. Honestly, I really didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I didn't know what they looked like. All I kind of felt was, my feeling was, with the new ones hitting the market, I, f I felt that it might diminish the old ones. Um, I I'll be honest, I was never the biggest fan of the Colt Python. Um, I, I just got to be honest. I've, I've been a Smith & Wesson guy. I've always been a Smith & Wesson, uh, you know, I've, I've always grabbed those more than I grabbed the Colts on in that aspect, in the revolvers. Um, so I did. I traded a, a Colt Python for a, uh, a really old 1940s uh, 1911. I feel like I got the better deal, uh, even though it was probably an up and up trade, but I still feel, I don't regret the trade. Um, absolutely love that 1911, still got it. Uh, it's one of my cherished ones. Uh, it, it's one I looked for for years. And at the time when that happened, I didn't have the money um, and I had that to trade. And they were they the guy seemed interested, so I do remember I did get the trade on the up and up uh, the trade, and I think I got some cash out of it too. So, all right. So anyway, um, hindsight 2020, I think I would because I had just bought another one from that guy not too long ago, or, or like the day before. Um, hindsight, I wish I would have traded him the Python for the two that I had gotten. That's what I wish I would have tried to do. But you know what? But that was the trade. Um, I don't. I don't look back on it. I don't. Uh, I don't regret it. I. I really enjoy what I got out of it. So that was one of the trades that I remember. That was probably one of the best ones I've done. All right, and that was pretty much the end of my Python run. I didn't have a Python after that. So, but uh, that might change <laughs> now with the new ones out, especially the blued ones. 
All right, Slim Fire. Morning, JW. And as always, another awesome collector's uh, radio talk video. Um, very nice 19 or uh, nine millimeter pistols you have there, and I like uh, I like the 22 LR 1911. Yes, it's my blaster. Uh, I want to go out and just dump, uh, just kill a brick of 22s. Yeah, that's the gun I bring. Uh, that or a Ruger Mark II, you know. But I usually uh, like that 1911 a lot. It was 1911 fanatic, I guess. All right, thanks for the video, Slim. P.S. Have you ever tried Kona coffee from the Big Island? Yes, I have. I have actually worked on a couple of coffee uh, farm jobs. Um, and yes, drank the coffee quite often uh, out there. It is strong stuff. Uh, it, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, nowadays I just buy whatever's on sale. But, uh, you know, they do, there is a big, you know, craze for, um, I do know it kicks you, it gets you going up in the morning real fast, a lot better than the regular stuff. I have tried some Kona coffee that was so smooth, it was, a, it really was a big difference. You could drink it straight, straight up, nothing added to it, and you could taste the flavors and everything in it is amazing. Um, those are like the 100% uh, organic farms and stuff that were doing it amazing the boar beetle really hurt that industry all right uh, i got a lot of coffee land stories maybe someday maybe I'll, I'll share them with you if you guys like all right fire uh 1777 uh gun sales in my area are really slow but the prices are still high that's unfortunate you know the prices you know and i and i feel like they're going to jet up you know uh, as we do you know near all this stuff all right cat Reference the uh, alt mount grips. Check out the ones with finger grooves. They are much thicker. I bought a set for my new Anaconda. Uh, feel great in the hand. Good tip. Uh, the, everybody, anybody looking for the grips there, the alt mount ones with the finger grooves, um, according to Cap here, they are, they are thicker. Um, because I do notice that the new Python grips, they are thinner. Uh, the ones that are being produced by Alt Mount for uh, Colt, they are slimmer in um, the grip in the hand. So, and the same it felt with the new Smiths, so it's not just the Colts. Um, the older grips are always going to be king. They're always expensive, um, as which segues to our next comment here, talking about grips. Joe P., my man Joe. That's that coffee cup. Um. Good morning, JW. I have the same problem with alt mount grips. Not only are they too thin for my ham, but I just can't warm up to laminate. Uh, I want solid wood grips on, my, on all my import guns, uh, so I have spent a ton of money over the years on vintage grips and custom wood grips from places like Eagle Grips, so sorry. I know that makes you cringe. Um, no, I've done the same, Joe. I've done the same. <laughs> all these places, Eagle Grips, um, VintageGrips.com, uh, they make a lot of reproduction grips, uh, and, and we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, you know, um, Buffalo Brothers, Buffalo Brothers out here in Mesa, uh, Arizona, um, they're, they're good people. They really are. Buffalo Brothers, I can't speak enough about them. Uh, they really offer a good product if you're looking for a lot of old school Western style and aged ivory style grips. All right, uh, Eli Faust, hey! Long time no hear from you. Um, I'm sure you've been still kicking around. <coughs> um, he says hi and hey back. All right, George, regarding your high power to 1911 comparison, I went the other way. First 9mm 1911, then bought high power, not close. <laughs> high power, much nicer for uh, to me for shoot. Um, fits my hand better and, see, and seems like an improvement over 1911 enjoy your every enjoy every day yes um yeah you know i i understand where you're coming from you know it does it is wider obviously it's the double stack um but yeah high power is always that mistress 1911 i always say it um you know it always is going to kick around there but I'm a 1911 guy. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to talk about uh, this week on the show, we're going to kind of brush through here, is the ultimate 1911 that everybody talks about, and that is the revered Colt Series 70, the Mark IV government model. I tell you, I can't count how many times I've heard 
uh, in random shops, random conversations in which I do not engage in anymore because they're so runaway run-ons. The Colt Mark IV Series 70, the 1911 here, This you always hear that, Series 70, Series 70 Colt. Well, we've got three of them here on the table. These are all government models. They're all large letter, meaning that they, on the other side here, where it says Colt's government model, it is the large font. Um, prefix or suffix 70 in the serial number indicates if it's yeah, before or after 1975. I've got, um, out of the three here that we've got featured, I've got some that feature uh, pre-75 uh, and um, you know post-75. So it doesn't really matter in that realm. Uh, once you start getting into the 80s, obviously you know what happened. But we're talking about the revered Series 70, the good old school, um, you know, the, the, the firearm that really just always gets the talk. Um, it's got that kind of uh, interesting roll mark on it. Colt Mark IV Series 70 government model. 45 automatic caliber with the beautiful rampant pony right there. Sighted hammer. Nickel trigger, short. Reason why this is actually one of my favorites is because it's pretty much identical to the old World War II A1. In a way, you could say I think these were kind of made on the same machinery as the old World War II's. Um, got the arch mainspring housing, enough grip safety, the beaver tail there to uh, not get hammer bite. At least I don't. I know a buddy of mine that does. They did kind of bob the hammer a little bit. That's done in the factory. When I first saw one of these, I thought somebody had done it. But it's actually on all, you know, I mean, I look at all the, the ones I've got and they all are the same. So anyway, uh, that's that's the one that's uh, always uh, kind of revered. Prior to the prior to the Series 70 would be the 60s models, the 50s and 60s. The 50s and 60s gun is pretty much identical. The roll mark is slightly different. If you actually want to see what the roll mark looks like, look at the Colt Classic model. That's actually, it's got all the, uh, it's actually a better looking roll mark in my opinion than the Series Mark 4 70 Series uh, roll mark. The, po the pony is on the side as it is, but it's got some other, uh, the, the lettering is a little bit more sleek, I think, and everything, so I, I always liked it better. Um, when they did those, grips changes, um, these all have the uh, straight walnut grip with the gold medallion. No uh, diamond cuts on the screw uh, scutcheon areas um, that doesn't have it. It's all straight um, checkered, which I like. That's actually my favorite grip, the medallion. Um, I do like that. They all have the original grips and everything. Um, prior to that, early 70s, they had um, what is known as, the collectors know them as, the, uh, the old barnyard or barn, barn door uh, siding grips, which are these right here. These are in really good condition. They haven't been uh, saturated with oil and everything. Uh, these are cool. These are those old school barn siding grips that everybody talks about. So that, that those were the grips on there prior to the, uh, the checkered, the full, the full checkered uh, grips there that you see there. So that changed. Um, now prior to that, when you're talking the 50s and the 60s, uh, you know, grips and everything, that was the, uh, what is known as the, the phenolic resin retro grips like this with the logo. They added their logo. These derive from World War II. World War II with the, their standard phenolic uh, resin grip like this. They were kind of this, uh, you know, plain, yeah, they look just like these without the medallion. And that was it. That's what they, they put on their guns believe it or not <laughs> and then they ran out of those ran out of the grips so they started making their own and they came out with those so um, you can still get stuff like this from vintagegrips.com um, they still make them you can still get those uh, from them there you can get them I think in brown and uh, kind of an orangey brown I don't know if they kind of I guess they kind of look like that a little bit um, kind of an orange brown so anyway that's the grips. That's kind of the, the changes with them. Um, the bluing, the, the, the polished side and uh, everything on the gun is really amazing. It looks great. The bluing is just nice. And then they matted the round edges. Still got those old, uh, you know, GI pathetic sights. But it does have that collet barrel bushing. You can actually see on the barrel how it's worn, those uh, scrapes. 
That's from the collet barrel bushing. The barrel bushing has got these fingers in it that grip the barrel, and uh, that's kind of their answer to tightening things up with the gun. Uh, as you know, some don't like to say or you know get mad when you say that the product, the uh, quality started to suffer a little bit with these. So still kind of an old rattle trap. That's typical of the Colt. Um, one thing I did notice with these. You know, and they're all kind of like this, is if you depress the grip safety, you can actually see how poorly done, fitted it is with the frame. Some may be worse than others, but this is kind of the way it is. This is actually the worst one I've, I've got right here. It depresses quite a bit, and it leaves kind of a sharp edge a little bit there. So it does, when you're firing it, you're going to know that you've, you've fired a 45 for sure out of one of these uh, things there. So... But uh, yeah, but it is, you know, it's nostalgic. It's my favorite one. Uh, I really do like it. That's, uh, you know, just the classicness of it, the, you know, the nostalgia, the cool factor. Uh, anytime you hear that, that Colt Series 70 talk, you know, it's always about that. So that, that um, I can't express, you know, that, that is just the, that's just the cool, coolness of it all. Uh, it has all my favorite features. My eyesight doesn't really care for the sights anymore, but <laughs> they are what they are. Um, but kind of interesting, because after that, as we know, went into the Series 80. A lot of people aren't really a fan of the Series 80 stuff. So anyway, thanks for hanging out this, uh, this Saturday, and we'll let you go, and I'll see you next time.